Coming up, we're going to take a look at the 49ers depth chart, and that roster, very, very deep. You know what's deep, too? Magic Spoon's bevy of flavors, and you can get $5 off at checkout by going to magicspoon.com slash 49ers report, zero grams of sugar, 14 grams of protein per serving, peanut butter, my personal favorite. Coming up on today's show, we're going to break down the 49ers depth chart, which they released this week. San Francisco 49ers kicking off preseason play against the Kansas City Chiefs. A Super Bowl matchup from two years ago on Saturday night. We're going to be doing a live watch party here at Chat Sports, so be sure to tune in 8.15 p.m. Eastern. 53-man roster cut down for the Niners and for all teams across the NFL August 31st. So without further ado, let's dive into this depth chart, take a look at some of the more intriguing position battles that are going down in training camp so far in Santa Clara, and we start off with the offensive line. So everything pretty much in stone here. The only position up for grabs, right guard. But Trent Williams, highest paid tackle in the league. He's set to start at left tackle. I think he's the best left tackle in the game. Lakin Tomlinson, former first round pick, for the Detroit Lions, I think he's been a productive player. For the Niners, he's going to be your starting left guard. Alex Mack came to San Francisco in free agency. He is your starting center. Mike McGlinchey at right tackle certainly wants to redeem himself from a down year last year. The position up for grabs here is right guard. And Daniel Brunskill has been getting the majority of the first team snaps at right guard. Now, is Aaron Banks going to be able to unseat him? Hopefully for the 49ers' sake, because so far, the second-round pick from the 2021 NFL Draft has had a rough camp. He's been getting beat in one-on-one -on -one battles. I think that Aaron Banks has a lot of potential, but so far in training camp, he hasn't displayed it yet. And I think that Aaron Banks simply needs to be better. He needs to show that, hey, at Notre Dame, I was a baller. I barely gave up any snaps during my great career with the Fighting Irish, but so far in training camp, I haven't proven why I was a second-round pick. There's also this. Keep an eye out for Jalen Moore, who was also drafted in this past draft out of Western Michigan. The Niners envisioned him being a guard, but he also played tackle at Western Michigan, and now on the depth chart, he is listed as a tackle. I think that positional versatility of him swinging from tackle to guard really improves his chances of making the 53-man roster. While I think that the Niners' starting offensive line is probably the best in the NFC West, the depth is a little bit of a concern. The Justin School injury early on in offseason workouts really affected this team a little bit, and if Aaron Banks simply cannot play, that's a bigger hit to the depth of this unit. So grade the 49ers' offensive line going into the preseason. A, B, C, D, or F, I'm hovering around to B. I do think they are the best offensive line in the NFC West. From the offensive linemen who are going to be protecting the quarterbacks to the quarterback depth chart. No surprise here, Jimmy Garoppolo is set to get one series, according to Kyle Shanahan, in the preseason opener against the Chiefs. Trey Lance, he's slated in as the quarterback number two. He's going to get around 30 snaps on Saturday night. As for quarterback number three, this has been an ongoing camp battle. Right now, Nate Sudfeld is ahead of Josh Rosen. And I think that Nate Sudfeld is going to end up making this roster ahead of Josh Rosen. Rosen obviously has more pedigree. I think Sudfeld is the better player. As for quarterback one, and the starting quarterback for this team that I think should have Super Bowl aspirations because this lineup and this team is certainly stacked. I think we're going to find out in the next two weeks who the starter is going to be. Kyle Shanahan and this staff, they're going to have a great look at Lance against the Chiefs on Saturday in extended real game action in his professional debut. Next week, Niners have joint practices against the Chargers leading into that second preseason game. If Lance balls out and he's letting it rip, and he lights the world on fire, wouldn't surprise me if he's QB1 going into week one against the Detroit Lions. Running back depth chart, Raheem Mostert. Right now, he's the head honcho. Trey Sermon, somewhat of a surprise here to some, not to me, as the running back number two. Wayne Gallman, with all of his experience, is currently third string right now. And then after that, 
it's up for grabs. I think Elijah Mitchell has a better opportunity of making this roster than Jamichael Hasty because the Niners really like Mitchell. That's why they drafted him out of Louisiana. And there are going to be a lot of tough decisions to make on the final cutdown day by August 31st that Kyle Shanahan is going to have to make because I think Wayne Gallman, Trey Sermon, Raheem Mostert, and Elijah Mitchell might be safe. After that, Jamichael Hasty, maybe even Jeff Wilson, who's currently on PUP, they might be on the outside looking in. Let's move on to the wide receivers right now. The top two, I think they're superstars, and Debo Samuel as well as Brandon Ayuk. After that, the depth, another concerning area for me. Mohamed Sanu, the word is out of Santa Clara, he's had a great camp. But is he going to be able to be your consistent option at wide receiver three? Richie James currently at wide receiver four. After that, Jalen Hurd has to stay healthy. Trent Sherfield has certainly had a really good training camp. I think he could move himself into a position to take over wide receiver three or wide receiver four duties. He's going to have to turn up in preseason. For Jalen Hurd, I think he could realistically get cut. I understand that this guy has a world of upside. I understand that the physical intangibles pop off the screen at you when you watch him play. Here's the problem, though. He hasn't played a single snap so far since getting drafted out of Baylor in the third round. You have to play to make the roster, and you're not going to make the team when you're in the tub. You know that saying out there, the best ability, availability. And Jalen Hurd certainly has the ability. He hasn't been available, though. And if he doesn't play at all in the preseason, I think he's going to get cut because other guys who have been able to play and produce, they get a better opportunity. Which wideout is a sleeper? Is it Trent Sherfield? Is it Jawan Jennings? Maybe even Austin Watkins? Another wide receiver on this roster. Let me know who you think is the biggest sleeper at the wide receiver position on this roster right now going into training uh, preseason. 49ers Report is presented to you by our friends at Magic Spoon. You can get $5 off at your checkout by going to magicspoon.com slash 49ers Report. Not only is the cereal from Magic Spoon really delicious, it's also healthy for you because they use clean ingredients and per serving, 13 grams of protein, 0 grams of sugar per serving, only 4 grams of net carbs, and I love food products that use clean ingredients but are also high in protein. Because back in the day, I used to be kind of fat, to be honest with you. I was around 215, 220 pounds. I was crushing cereal late at night. But I've been able to reintroduce Magic Spoon cereal into my diet because it's actually good for me and it doesn't pack on the pounds. High in protein, low in carbs, it's sweet and delicious. You have to test out some of these flavors that we're filtering through on your screen right now and you can get $5 off on those flavors by going to magicspoon.com slash 49ers report. That link for $5 off is going to be available in the description as well as the comment section of this video. Man, peanut butter, frosty, Cocoa, fruity, they even trot out some flavors that come out on special occasions. See what I'm talking about by going to magicspoon.com slash 49ers report as we continue to look at this 49ers depth chart. We stay on the offensive end of the football by looking at the tight ends. George Kittle, he could be an all-pro this year. Ross Dwelly, currently at tight end number two. Charlie Warner at tight end number three. After that, these guys are competing for roster spots, maybe even on the practice squad. Michael Pruitt, he's been out for a little while. Jordan Matthews, the converted wide receiver. Josh Perkins, uh, he was just signed last week, taking the place of Doug Peterson's kid. To the fullbacks, Kyle Juszczyk is going to make this team. He set a record for the highest contract that a fullback has ever gotten over the course of NFL history. After that, though, Josh Hokett has been very, very impressive for this 49ers team. Now, the only problem is you only have so many roster spots to fulfill. So I think that he's not going to make the roster, and I think if another fullback needy team across the NFL needs one, they're going to end up signing him. But there's no doubt that at the fullback spot, the Niners are set with Kyle Juszczyk, and he is a very critical component of this offense because he can carry the ball, he can pave open lanes for the running backs, but also he can catch the ball out of the backfield as well. And the clip of him beating Fred Warner over the weekend in a one-on-one -on -one drill was incredible. You're talking about a fullback beating the best coverage linebacker and the best off-ball linebacker in the National Football League on a wheel route. Kyle Juszczyk, he is just built different. As for the special teams, all chalk here with the exception of punt returner. 
Mitch Wishnowski, he's going to be your punter. Robbie Gold, a very reliable kicker. Tabor Pepper at long snapper. But Brandon Ayuk at punt returner, a surprise to some people. Richie James as the starting kick returner. I don't love putting your premium offensive assets at punt returner, but there's no doubt that IU can give you some juice there with flipping the field or being a threat to take it to the house on any given occasion. Niner gang, make sure you, subs you subscribe to the 49ers report because we're bringing you the latest 49ers news and rumors, training camp updates, and oh yeah, on Saturday night, 8.15 p.m. Eastern, we're going to be doing a watch party for 49ers versus Chiefs because Niners football is finally back. So go to youtube.com slash 49ers TV or hit that red subscribe button down below. If you're watching right now saying, what is a 49ers watch party? Well, we've never done it on the 49ers report before. We're going to be drinking beers, live play-by-play, -play, live scoreboard. We'll be answering your questions as well. So come hang out with us and watch some 49ers football on Saturday against KC in a rematch of the Super Bowl from two years ago. Let's pivot to the defensive side of the football. Defensive line, I think it's going to be one of the best in the entire NFL. Eric Armstead, Javon Kinlaw, DJ Jones, Nick Bosa, your starters across the board. If you're looking at some questions, D Ford as a number two, that's going to change depending on the defensive front alignment. Contavia Street, very good backup. He's been having a good camp. Samson Ebucom, one of the big signings for this team, coming over from the Los Angeles Rams. I expect him to be a hybrid edge rusher combination. This 49ers front is lethal. So I love the starters across the board. I like some of the depth there. Are Mo Hurst and Arden Key, who come over from the Raiders, going to make this roster potentially? But if you have them as second stringers, maybe even third stringers, that's a good sign for D'Amico Ryans as a first-year defensive coordinator. The 49ers' uh, second level of this defense, they're in good shape. Aziz Al-Shahir, he's coming off an injury. He's ahead of the curve right now, Kyle Shanahan in good spirits about him coming off that injury. Fred Warner, Dre Greenlaw as your starters across the board. After that, some concerns about some of the depth. Justin Hilliard, an undrafted free agent. Is he going to be able to crack this roster? We will see. Elijah Sullivan, another guy who's trying to prove himself as well. I'm honing in here on Marcel Harris. This is a guy who Niners fans know because he's been on this team for a little while. But he has made a switch from being in the defensive backfield to being a linebacker. And as the NFL game changes, and as offensive schemes change, it's become more and more important to have smaller kind of cornerbacks play the linebacker spot because they're able to be rangy in coverage. Can Marcel Harris impress this coaching staff enough during training camp as well as the preseason to make this roster? The defensive backs now. The starters, good. The depth, a little bit of a concern. Emmanuel Mosley, Kaywan Williams, Jimmy Ward, uh, Tavon Wilson, uh, Jason Verrett, all of, your, all of those guys as your starters in the defensive backfield. And after that, with some of the depth pieces, you're going to be relying on some rookies in Ambry Thomas, Diamador Lenore, as well as Talanoa Hufanga. Jaquaski Tart, he suffered that toe injury all the way back in November. So who the hell knows when he's going to come back because Kyle Shanahan didn't seem to know. Ha ha Clinton Dix, as for him, is he going to be a backup safety and can he even crack this roster? I'm wondering at this point, can you get anything from ha ha Clinton Dix on this defense? Because at this point, you really need him. Tart, out for a little while. Uh, Tavarius Moore, really like him as a player. Um, Tony Jefferson, also out. So you're talking about very steady contributors and very important players on the back end for this 49ers secondary at the safety spot who simply are not on the field for maybe the foreseeable future, which is why the Niners had to bring in HaHa -Ha Clinton Dix after also working out Andrew Sandejo. 49ers safeties, it's not a good spot right now. I'm not sure if HaHa -Ha Clinton Dix is going to be able to contribute. This is a guy who's a former first-round pick. He made it to a Pro Bowl, but he hasn't been in the league since 2019. So we'll see if he can do anything in training camp or in the preseason. It might get to the point where he has to. 
So do you like the Niners signing of HaHa ha Clinton Dix? It was somewhat of an emergency signing because all of those guys went down. Type L for like, type H for ha ha. It was a bad one. You're laughing to the bank about ha ha Clinton Dix signing with the Niners. Be sure to get those votes in in the comment section down below. Let me know if you like the 49ers signing of ha ha Clinton Dix.